In this movie, we'll look closer at one-to-one -one associations and see how to implement them in Rails. To start, let's consider when you might actually use a one-to-one -one association, when you're actually coding in the real world. There are typically two main uses. The most common reason you would use it is for unique items that a person or a thing can have only one of. For example, an employee has one office, or a student has one ID card. The ID card is unique, it belongs only to this one student and to no one else, and that student can only have one of them. Now if our use case changes and our relationship changes, and suddenly an employee can have several offices, well then of course we would need a different relationship. But if the definition and the way we want to use it is that each employee can have only one office, then we can use a one-to-one -one association. The second reason is that sometimes they're used to break up a single table. So for example, customer has one billing address. All the columns that make up the customer billing address could go in the customer table. The customer still just has one billing address and there's a set of columns that define what that billing address is. But we can also take those and shift them off into a separate table. Why would you want to do that? Well, sometimes it's useful to have all of those in one table where it's easy to access them. The other reason is that sometimes billing address might be used rarely, but customer is used frequently. And it might help you with database performance. A really good example of this might be stage has one lighting configuration. If lighting configuration has 40 or 50 columns to it, it might really be beneficial to take that, put it somewhere separate, and use it rarely, whereas the stage object or the stages table would be used very commonly. Now in truth, you don't use one-to-one -one relationships very often. It's far more common that you're going to use one-to-many relationships. And in fact, in the simple CMS application that we're going to be building as a project, there is no reason for us to use a one-to-one -one association. And rather than try and just invent one and come up with something that's kind of clunky, instead we're just going to test it out, try it, and then we'll abandon it and move on. So to get some experience working with it, we're going to use subject and page. And just for the moment, we're going to pretend that a subject can only have one page associated with it. Now, I know that eventually it's going to be subject has many pages. We'll get to that in the next movie. But for now, let's just pretend that it only has one. And then, of course, a page will belong to a subject. You want to make sure that any class that has belong to should have a foreign key. That's your tip. Belongs to equals foreign key. We already defined our pages table with a foreign key of subject ID, so we're all set there. And the last note that I want to make is that you always, always, always want to define both sides of the relationship. You don't want to just say that the subject has one page and just leave it at that. We also want to tell the page its relationship back to subject. It has to go both ways. That way if we have a subject object, we can find its page or pages. And if we have a page object, we can find out what subject it belongs to. We can traverse the relationship from either side. Let's actually try it in our simple CMS. So inside our app folder, inside models, we're going to open up subject.rb. And I like to put all of my relationships at the top of my models. It's one of the very first things that I declare in my models. It makes it nice and easy to find them. And all we're going to do is say that a subject has one page. And that's it. It's that easy. Notice that it's page singular because it's has one. And that just helps it to read well. Has one page. Let's switch over and open up page.rb. Let's do the same thing in here. We're going to do belongs to subject. And that's all there is to it. If we have a foreign key in place and we define both sides of the relationship, then we're all set. We can use active record associations now. Now, we're also making use of Rails conventions to use sensibly named things. That's how it's able to know that the foreign key to use in this case is subject underscore ID. If we weren't using those conventions, we could provide some configuration information here. You could provide a hash, for example, that would say the foreign key is, and whatever it is. In this case, it is subject ID. That's going to be the default based off of looking at belongs to. So even though we aren't going to be using this now, I just want to make sure that you know that you can supply additional options there. So let's go to our Rails console now and try it out. You'll see that I'm already inside the root of my Rails application, and I'm going to call Rails console here. If you already have Rails console running, you'll want to stop it and restart it just to make sure that you get that new model code that we just put in. So let's start by doing subject equals subject.find1. That'll find our first subject. And because we defined the has1 relationship, we now have a new method called subject.page. This method didn't exist before. By declaring the relationship, we now get this method added. Subject.page, well right now there is no page that's been attached to it. We need to do that. So let's create a page to start with. First page equals page new. And let's give it a name. I'll just call it first page. And we'll give it a permalink. Call it first. And position. 
we'll give it first position, and that should be enough to create it. So now we've instantiated a new page object. It's not saved to the database yet. You'll see here that it says page ID equals nil. And you see that subject ID is also equal to nil. So it has not been assigned to a subject. Now just like subject.page was a new method that was added when we defined the relationships, we also have the reverse of that, which is that the first page dot subject. Well, it has no subject right now. But we did get this method added to our page class when we defined the relationship. So we also got another method, subject.page equals, and this allows us to assign things to the page value, not just to return the value, but to actually assign it. And so we can assign first page to it. There it is. Now it's assigned first page to be the subjects page. So we now have the relationship made between the two. Notice also that it saved this information in the database because the page ID has now been set to one. It was nil because it wasn't saved, but now it has been saved. First page new record. False. It's not a new record anymore. It was a new record. Active Record knew that in order to permanently relate them together, it needed to store that subject ID in the database. So now that the relationship is made, we can type first page dot subject, and then you'll see that we get back the subject. And same thing if we say subject dot page, it'll return to us this value, the thing that's stored in the first page variable. So we can move both ways across the relationship, and it's very easy for us to be able to find the related data. Now, what about unrelating it? Well, we could do subject.page equals nil, and that will set this subject's page to have no page. That won't remove the page from the database, though. It'll just break the relationship. So you can do that. That'll just break the relationship, and then it's up to us to actually go and find that page ID one and delete it separately as an individual record. Or we can actually say page.destroy, and that will actually destroy it so that it's no longer in the database. So if we say page.all, you'll see it comes back and says there are no pages in the database. As I noted earlier, we won't be using one-to-one -one associations very often at all. But it's very good to understand it because this is going to provide a very simple, easy-to-use foundation that we can use to look at one-to-many associations, which is what we'll do next.